In this masterclass series, we will be outlining the EUS guided approaches to biliary access and drainage in a prospective assessment of a thousand consecutive ERCP procedures. We observed that ERCP was successful in 99.4% of cases at our tertiary referral center. In the same study, of 49 failed ERCPs from outside facilities, all were successfully cannulated at repeat ERCP attempt with over 20% requiring advanced cannulation techniques. When this data is extrapolated to the US population, only 4,200 US guided biliary drainage procedures will be required annually. Not only does ERCP yield optimal outcomes, it is also significantly cheaper when compared to EUS or percutaneous approaches. Therefore, ERCP is an excellent technique with excellent outcomes when performed by proficient endoscopists. Therefore, EUS guided biliary intervention should not be an alternative for poor ERCP skill set. With the exception of cholidocodiogenostomy, which can be performed using luminoposing metal stents, all other US guided biliary interventions, as with ERCPs, will require placement of self expandable metal stents or plastic stents. Given the need to navigate complex strictures using guide wires or other accessories, proficiency in ERCP is advantageous for successful outcomes. The type of EUS guided biliary intervention to be undertaken depends on the level of biliary obstruction and the type of disease, benign versus malignant. In general, benign diseases such as stones are preferably managed by antigrade or retrograde methods via the transpapillary route, particularly in surgical candidates. Malignant diseases can be managed by cholidocodiogenostomy or hepatogastrostomy based on the level of obstruction or by antigrade or rendezvous techniques. In rare instances, when both ERCP and EUS fail in patients with distal biliary obstruction and an intact cystic duct, EUS-guided gallbladder drainage can be undertaken as a rescue measure. We will now review the technique of cholidocodiogenostomy in patients with distal biliary obstruction. When the common bile duct is dilated to more than 15 mm, biliary drainage can be undertaken using a lumen opposing metal stent. EUS guided bile duct drainage was performed using a 10 mm diameter lumen opposing metal stent with an electrocautery enhanced delivery system. The common bile duct was punctured from the duodenal bulb using the tip of the electrocautery enhanced delivery system. After positioning the delivery system within the bile duct, stent deployment hub was released to deploy the distal flange of the stent. This was followed by deployment of the proximal flange within the duodenal lumen. However, once deployed, the lumen freezing metal stent can assume a horizontal axis in the bile duct and thereby impede the flow of bile. Also, this can serve as a nidus for formation of sludge. To overcome this limitation, a double pigtail plastic stent can be placed within the lamb's orifice so that the axis is now vertical in the plane of the bile duct, facilitating better bile flow. In this patient with pancreatic head adenocarcinoma, the obstructed common bile duct was dilated to only 11 mm. When placement of a 6 mm aluminum pacing metal stent was attempted, the distance was insufficient, resulting in release of the proximal flange within the soft tissue. In addition to the unfortunate creation of a bio leak, also, larger diameter lambs have a longer range of deployment distance, and this should be borne in mind when lambs are being placed for biliary decompression. When the common bile duct is not adequately dilated, one must consider the placement of a self expanding metal stent in lieu of a lambs. The common bile duct was first punctured using an FDA needle. After puncturing the common bile duct, contrast was injected through the needle to obtain a clangiogram. A guide wire was then inserted through the needle and into the common bile duct. The tract was then dilated using a cystotome and a balloon, followed by insertion of a fully covered self-expanding metal stent.
We will now review the technique of hepatic gastrostomy for biliary decompression, particularly in patients with intrahepatic or hyal obstruction. After puncturing the dilated intrahepatic radicals using a 19 gauge FNA needle at an appropriate angle, which usually corresponds to segment 2, a clangiogram is obtained. It is very important not to inject air and to prime the needle with diluted contrast. Excess contrast injection will preclude visualization of the guide wire and other accessories. A 0.025 or 035 inch flexible guide wire is advanced via the needle and towards the liver hilum. It is important not to torque the needle but rather the shaft of the echoendoscope to advance the guide wire in order to prevent wire shearing. The transmural tract is then dilated using a 6 French cystotome followed by placement of a long 8 or 10 mm diameter partially covered metal stent with a covered portion bridging the stomach liver interface to prevent bile leak. We will now review the technique of anti-grade stent placement. This patient with malignant stricture in the common hepatic duct underwent anti-grade stent placement. In anti-grade stenting, the procedural steps are very similar to hepaticogastrostomy, with the exception that the guide wire should be advanced to the duodenum after navigating the intra- or extrahepatic biliary stricture. The guide wire is sometimes best navigated after access has been gained into the biliary tree and the FNA needle has been exchanged for a cystotome. Given the flexibility, the cystotome is more adaptable and agile for guide wire manoeuvring. Once the guide wire has been coiled within the duodenum, a long uncovered metal stent is placed. We will now review the rendezvous technique for biliary decompression. In this patient with locally advanced pancreatic cancer diagnosed at EUS, the ampulla was completely distorted, resulting in failed cannulation. The extrahepatic bile duct was punctured using a 19 gauge needle, and a guide wire was navigated by the stricture into the duodenum. Once again, it is important to maneuver the tip of the echoendoscope so that it is tilted towards the distal bile duct and not the liver hilum in order to facilitate guide wire passage to the duodenum. Attempting to change the trajectory of the guide wire within the FNA needle can result in wire shearing. The echoendoscope is then exchanged for a duodenoscope. The guide wire is then grasped and retrieved using a rat tooth forceps. and an ERCP is performed by cannulating the bile duct using the guide wire. An uncovered metal stent was then successfully placed in this patient. Rarely, when both ERCP and US guided interventions fail, in patients with distal biliary obstruction and an intact gallbladder in whom the cystic duct is spared, biliary decompression can be achieved by performing EOS guided gallbladder drainage. In this patient with pancreatic head adenocarcinoma, biliary cannulation was not successful at ERCP due to a distorted papilla. US guided biliary drainage also failed as the compression of the bile duct by the distended gallbladder and the pancreatic cancer precluded passage of accessories over an intraductal guide wire. Fortunately, the cystic duct was spared in this patient by the cancer and therefore biliary decompression was achieved by draining the gallbladder via the stomach using a 15mm lumen posing metal stent. This resulted in resolution of jaundice in this patient. 
This rescue technique was proven to be successful in this multi-centre Italian study where resolution of jaundice was achieved in 80% of patients. One has to be cautious when performing this procedure in operable candidates as transduodenal lambs and associated fistula can make Whipple procedure challenging. In a recent meta-analysis and systematic review, it was observed that while major adverse events and mortality were seen in less than 1% of patients, mild to moderate adverse events were seen in about 14% of patients undergoing US-guided biliary interventions, with lowest rates when interventions were performed using the rendezvous technique. Dedicated accessories such as tubular lambs are needed to overcome some of the technical limitations and advance the discipline forward. Thank you so much for watching this masterclass on EOS guided approaches to biliary access and drainage. To observe and learn in real time complex biliary and pancreatic interventions, please register and attend the premier global event, Florida Live Endoscopy, from August 22nd to 24th, 2024, in Orlando, Florida, where the magic of endoscopy begins.